Now, I believe that the feast day cards are a powerful tool for three major reasons. Uh, number one, the Messiah fulfilled and will continue to fulfill his uh, redemptive work surrounding these particular days. The feast days are actually the only biblical holidays or holy days that he affirms in scripture, not Easter, Christmas, Valentine's. You know, those days are actually dedicated to other gods. And number two, prophecy. Uh, these cards present teaching moments. And uh, one of the main emphasis on the card is prophecy. So the third reason that these cards are so powerful is that when possible, we have actual historical representations of true Israel. We also include on the cards where the images are now located. So this is an opportunity to discuss the meaning of the feast days uh, from a messianic perspective. Also, it's a teaching moment on specific prophecies, and it also opens up discussions about the images of true Israel. So I'm in the book of Daniel, and I'm studying out of the 1599 Geneva Bible, and I ran across uh, this verse that's referencing the battles that the Antichrist will be fighting. So check this out. So in Daniel 11:43 it says, But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and of the black moors where he shall pass. So I thought that was interesting. I, it kind of threw me off a little bit. You know, I didn't expect that. So come to find out there are several occasions throughout the uh, Geneva Bible where black moor is used instead of the term Ethiopian, both of which are derived from the Hebrew word uh, kushi, which means uh, blackness. So we see it occur in Jeremiah 13.23. Instead of saying, can the Ethiopian change his skin, it said, can the black moor change his skin or the leopard his spots, then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. And so it comes up again in Jeremiah uh, 38, uh, through chapters 38 through 39 in reference to Ebed-Melech, um, uh, and it refers to him as a black moor. It says, now when Ebed-Melech, ye black moor, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. Then the king sat in the gate of Benjamin. So as we go a little bit further, we see it occur again in Jeremiah 46. And it says, Come up ye horses, and raise ye chairs, and let the valiant men come forth, the black moors, and the Libyans that bear the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. Then we go to the book of Ezekiel. And we have another instance. And so it says, Behold, therefore I come unto thee, and up on thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Syene, even unto the borders of the black moors. Ezekiel 30 and 9. In that day shall their messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless moors afraid. And fear shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. So this really helps us get into the minds of those who, who lived in that era. It, it helps us to understand that there was a big distinction between, uh, you know, the black Moors who, who were, uh, in this case, uh, uh, Ethiopians or Hamites. You know, and so that puts a big distinction between the black Moors and also uh, the black Hebrews. So when we study history, we can we can begin to make those distinctions in a lot of cases. Also, just a little bit of history on the Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible was the first English version to be translated entirely from the original languages of Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So the text is principally just a revision of Tinsdale's earlier work of 1534, but Tins Tinsdale only translated the New Testament and the Old Testament through Second Chronicles before he was put in prison. So the Geneva Bible is one of the most historically significant translations of the Bible into English, preceding the, the King James Version by 51 years. And so it was the primary Bible of 16th century English uh, uh, Protestantism and was used by William Shakespeare, Oliver Cromwell, John Knox, John Donne, and others. So it was also one of the Bibles taken to America on the Mayflower. And it can be located in the Pilgrim Hall Museum uh, where several uh, of the Bibles of the Mayflower passengers are kept.